Okay. <clears throat> well, how do you measure the magnitude and phase? Well, the basic measurement is magnitude and phase. Now, once we measure the magnitude and the phase of the load impedance, then we derive all the rest of the stuff. There's, we derive the resistance, the reactance, the SWR, the coax loss, length of the uh, coax line, the capacitance that you're measuring, the inductance, the resonance, all of those things are taken just from that one measurement there. <coughs> um, let's see, let's go to the next one. <coughs> now, here, here's how this thing works. There's a resistor there. It's in series with the load. The load is unknown. <coughs> well, the, um, the current that flows through that resistor is, as you know from Ohm's law, uh, is equal to the voltage divided by this resistance. Okay, the voltage divided by that resistance. All right, that same current that flows through that resistor also flows through the unknown impedance here. Okay, now that current is also that voltage right here divided by that impedance. Well, those two currents are equal. So Vs over S is equal to Vz uh, over Z. Okay, very simple equation, and all you have to do is solve for Z, and that gives you the magnitude of impedance. That's all you have to do. The only thing you, only thing you have to measure is the voltage across that resistor and the voltage across this impedance, and then the voltage across the whole thing. With those three scalar voltages, we can calculate uh, not only the magnitude of the impedance, but also the angle. <coughs> okay, now to get the angle of the impedance, uh, you, draw, you can draw a phasor diagram of those three voltages, because if the impedance is not resistive, then there are some angles involved, and, and you can't just add these resistors up. You have to do a phasor addition. <clears throat> so um, uh, <clears throat> you draw the voltage triangle right here. This is the um, uh, voltage across this 50 ohm resistor. <clears throat> this is the voltage across the load, and this is the input voltage. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, um, this voltage, um, <clears throat> across this resistor here is in phase with this current in the resistor because it's a resistor. So uh, the angle between the voltage here and this voltage, uh, this angle right there is the angle of the uh, current with respect to the voltage across this unknown uh, impedance. <clears throat> but anyway, all you have to do is take a protractor and measure that angle and you got the angle. Okay, so it's pretty easy. Now, of course, it's a little bit harder to measure this thing with a protractor if all you got in here is a microprocessor. So, <laughs> so you got to reduce this thing down to a, um, an equation that you can just let the microprocessor calculate. <clears throat> and if you notice, this equation is just made up of three uh, voltages, just three scalar voltages that um, what we use to, to measure these voltages are diodes across these. These are very low, uh, uh, has very low ohm voltage and make these measurements very accurately. And that'll give you the cosine of that angle. <coughs> and then in this case, with a resistor of 56 ohms, two and a half volts here, five volts here, and six and a half volts here, uh, we get a uh, magnitude of impedance of 28 ohms at an angle of 64 degrees, okay? <clears throat> well, from the magnitude and phase to 28, the 28 ohms at 64 degrees, you can calculate the series equivalent, okay? Um, looks my ohms right here dropped off of the uh, 25 and 12 ohms, but the series equivalent is calculated from this. It's just the magnitude of the impedance times cosine of that angle. Gives you 12, 12 ohms. And this is the impedance that you most likely will read when you're reading an antenna. So this antenna could have a, um, a uh, radiation or a feed point resistance of 12 ohms with 25 ohms of reactance. <coughs> um, and the reactance is magnitude of impedance uh, times the uh, sine of that angle, 25 ohms here. 
Now you can also calculate the parallel equivalent too. Um, and that's uh, given by the magnitude of impedance divided by the cosine of theta. In this case, the parallel equivalent in resistance is 64 ohms and the parallel equivalent reactance is, is uh, 31 ohms. I'm gonna tell you uh, some use for this. I know it doesn't sound like it's any, any use right now, but there is some use for it. <coughs> okay, now the one thing that the 269 can't do is it can't determine the sign of the imaginary part. It can't tell you what kind of reactance it is. It can't tell you if it's inductive reactance or if it's capacitive reactance, but it's a real easy thing to do. <coughs> if you put, now, <coughs> you, you can't, the load can't go through a piece of transmission line because transmission line would change that, would add some reactance to it. But if you put the load right there at the connector, some inductance or some capacitance, and you don't know which one it is, here's how you tell. <coughs> what you do is there is a, uh, you can read the reactance, um, <coughs> I don't have a load on it, but you can read the, the resistance and the reactance on it. And what you do is you look at the reactance, okay? And then you increase the frequency a little bit. Now when you increase the frequency a little bit, the reactance will go up or it'll go down. If it goes up, then you have an inductor. If it goes down, then you have a capacitor. Well, you can, you can think about that a little bit. You know, as you take an inductor, um, as you increase the frequency on an inductor, the, in, the uh, impedance goes up, okay? If you decrease the frequency on the inductor, the impedance goes down. As you go lower and lower in frequency, it looks like a short, okay? so. You can remember that when you go up in frequency, if the reactance goes up, you got inductance, and the capacitor is opposite. You know, if you go down in frequency, that capacitor starts to look like a, more and more like an open circuit. And as you go up in frequency, the capacitor starts to look more and more like a short circuit. So from that, you can remember that if you increase the frequency <coughs> and the reactance uh, goes down, then it's a capacitance, okay? Okay, don't fall asleep on me now. 